Today we're living in a time where it's very important to have strong people. As societies grow, you know, it kind of feels like, you know, everything's closing in on you. I mean, we have social media. I mean, we have sites on social media like MySpace. And every time you look around, it seems like it's just not enough space and people don't know that the space that they're in belongs to you. Uh, often I, I deal with kids that come to school and when they get to school, they realize uh, that they have some expectations. And we're all made out of the things that we're prepared with. We start out kind of like this canvas, okay? It's, it's empty from the time we're born. And then people give us things that will help us to arrive to moments. When we get to those moments, are we prepared for those moments? Because we were given the things that we need to. Well, we have an opportunity uh, in front of us that we'll be able to capitalize on because of fate. That means things that are predetermined, things that have been decided before we got there, or will we be destined for the moments that we arrive to, which means that there was something that we did. There were a certain set of tasks that we carry out. There was a certain preparedness that we had that will help us get to the moments. This is one of the biggest moments of my career as a judo player. Judo means the gentle or easy way. Now, by looking at this photo, you're probably saying, that don't look too easy and it don't look too gentle. What's funny is I've been the guy, even though in this picture I'm the guy that's on top, I've been the guy that's on, on the bottom. Uh, my childhood was much like that. I feel like I started on the bottom because I came up in a single parent household, uh, and one of the biggest things was I didn't quite have a support system uh, that would be able to help me. Sometimes, you know, a village is the most important thing. Sometimes more important than faith, faith, the things that have been predetermined. You have a village, you have a support system that's going to help you be able to succeed, help you to hone your skills, your life skills, your critical thinking skills to culminate to a moment where you could be successful and capitalize on those moments. And then some of us don't have all of those things. So today I give you judo. Judo was invented in 1882 by Dr. Jigoro Kano. Dr. Kano was a member of the Olympic Committee. He also uh, worked in government. Dr. Kano was an educator. And judo was invented, his teaching said that judo was invented to help people practice and train their mental and physical ability to help cultivate the spirit. That means help you prepare your mental ability and train your mental ability and train your physical ability to culminate to a point where your spirit is, is alive. Some of the greatest things about life starts with our spirit. The most passionate moments in our life will be the things that help us get to the moment, everything that helps us get to moments. This competition was a national championship. When I was younger, I never thought that I would go that far with judo. I was nine years old, I was 160 pounds, and like, I thought nobody wanted to play with me because every time I tried to play basketball, they looked me up and down, they were like, nah, this ain't gonna work. And the reason why is because when it was time to run down the court, I wasn't too, too sure I wanted to do that. You know, I'd stand at the other end, they were like, hey, what are you doing? They, are you cherry picking? I was like, who got some cherries? You know, that, you know, that was my thing. My thing was kind of stay to myself. If somebody could use me, if somebody would appreciate me, then I would feel good. But I never know, I never knew if, if, if somebody would appreciate me. I thought I was going to do very, very well when it came to football. I was big after all. I mean, I was nine years old. Again, I was 160 pounds. I know men now that just weigh 160 pounds. So at nine years old, I thought it was an advantage with football until I got on the field and people's mom was like, where's birth certificate at? <laughs> they would say, 
He's not playing with my kid. And that led me to be in a position to have to play with 15-year-olds. When I started playing with 15-year-olds, I began being bullied. At 160 pounds, among kids my age, I wasn't scared of anybody. I knew the odds were in my favor, but I never thought that I'd end up in a position where the odds weren't in my favor as far as size, that I wouldn't be able uh, to substantiate if somebody called me a name, if somebody pushed me too hard. So one day I'm in the bathroom after school, I'm eating a sandwich. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, what is this dude doing with a sandwich in the bathroom? Is he that hungry like that? He got, you know, I know he's 160 pounds. Was he 160 pounds because he's just taking sandwiches to the bathroom? That wasn't the, that wasn't the thing. <laughs> the reason that I was in the bathroom was because I would try to sit at the table with other kids. And when I tried to sit at the table with other kids, they would talk about me when I ate. So I would duck away. I would confine myself somewhere, and I just wanted peace. I knew I couldn't get suspended. My mom set some, ex some expectations for me that would say, hey, I expect, I expect you to go to school, I expect you to learn, and I expect you to represent our family well. And I didn't really know how to do that when I wasn't being accepted. So one day I'm welling on some kids in the bathroom, and I'm eating the sandwich and I'm, I'm fighting these kids because one kid made me drop my sandwich. And I'm like, TJ, you gonna make me beat you up today. And he was like, I'm gonna go get somebody else and we gonna jump you. So they come back to the bathroom and when they get to the bathroom, I'm there, I'm bigger than them. They're my age, they're my grade, but like I'm bigger than these kids and I'm taking advantage of the situation. And there's this little short guy. And I say short because he's about five, seven, who walks in the room and he breaks the fight up. He hurt himself in the process a little bit. I probably lost all etiquette. I probably lost all home training because I was yelling and screaming at this guy. And I was yelling in anger because all I knew how to do is try to meet my mom's expectation. And I wanted to go out. I wanted to represent uh, well. I wanted to do the great thing. But I had, I had lost my place. And I had got tired of being bullied. These kids were my age, but I was being pushed by the older kids. And then verbally, I was being challenged by the younger kids. So he challenged me to do judo. That was the ultimate challenge. It made perfect sense while one day I would join the ultimate challenge judo team that would give me the opportunity to travel the world. Now I've been on every continent besides Antarctica probably more than once to compete and represent our country. But my greatest accomplishment is being able to be valuable to my community. Coming up in Atlanta, Georgia, we had a lot of expectations. I grew up around people like Andrew Young, who would come down to my school, uh, which was Southwest Middle School, now named after his wife, Jean Child Young, would come down to my school and set expectations that we go back and we, in, in the African tradition and word, Sam Kofi, go back and bring the best from the past. So I would go back to my community and give something. Be a village for somebody else because I was being supported. And I now work at a high school. I'm able to give back. I've been in the school system for over 15 years. And my life skills help me. Sometimes we're down. When you're down, some of us, especially nowadays, they're thinking, who sees this? They think about who sees this? It's a shock to your ego. It's, 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 it's something that you feel like you're not in control of. But what's in your heart gives you the ability to get back up. The things that you're built with gives you the ability to get back up. Sometimes we're on top. And we're on top, things happen to us like ego. We start to boast and brag about the things that are going on with us. But in order to arrive to the next moment, in order to stay on top, there are gonna be some things that we have to remember. We have to remember that it's easy to be this person if we're not capitalizing on opportunities. We have to remember that respecting the fact that we all started from nothing and then sometimes that it was our faith that's, that got us there, the things that, that were predetermined and we're, we're not in control of that. But we're, we're often challenged to remember that our destiny is up to us. The things that we put into our moments, 
the spirit that we're going to allow to live in those moments will define our essence. People will remember us for that. So we try hard. Life skills are very, very important. They're very, very important. Very, very important to being successful. Judo gave me life skills. There are some situations that I can think of in society uh, that would probably be better if we had somebody uh, that had some training, that had a controlled environment where they can practice their skills, where they can practice saying, hey man, I need to get up from here. Life is pushing me around. I know it's hard to substantiate, but do I take some of the pushing that I'm getting or should I be fighting back? We need to be able to hone skills that are, allow us to discern if we're gonna take being pushed because pushing or f for the reason that we're being pushed is that we're being pushed to greatness. We're being pushed to better things. And there's sometimes, there's times we gotta push back, which means we have everything we need. We're secure in the goals that we have and with these goals, we're gonna get to the moments that define us. Judo, again, gives us the opportunity to take advantage of some of the best life skills that there is. It's the innovation, the new innovation that helps people gather their skills, gather their pros, actualize their cons, and be able to be successful. So in today's society, when we're looking around for the things that make kids great, in today's society, when we're looking around for the things that make adults great, we know that it comes down to what is in your spirit? What is given to you? Sometimes our parents give us things that, that's been in, in us for a, a while, and then there's moments that help bring them out. And then sometimes we come to places like school. It's an institution. They instill things into you that will help you define yourself, better yourself for the moments that's before you. But if you are ever looking for a way to practice skills, to make sure that you're mentally, physically, spiritually in alignment, then I challenge you to do judo. It's the chess game of life. Thank you.